Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over 10 easy mounts to get right now. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so today we're going to be going over 10 easy mounts that you can get basically either straight away or some are ones that can be wrecked out pretty dang fast. So other than that, let's just move into number one, which is vendor mounts. Now this will require you to have a little bit of gold in order to up front in order to buy. And the best ones to actually pad out your mount collection is in Dalaran. Now what you're gonna be wanting to do is go over towards Dalaran and go over towards the pet vendors. Outside of there is a lovely vendor who will show you an array of different types of mounts. This also includes the Tundra's Woolly Mammoth, which is also a vendor-based mount, which can be used quite well. Obviously, I got my one in the expansion of Wrath of the Lich King, but aside from all of that, this one still works quite well, especially if you don't have a lot of gold for things like the Brutosaur, which is now only available through the Black Market Auction House but it is one of those ones that you can just get and it's really handy, especially when you're leveling if you will need to vendor stuff out in the open world. That being said, you can get an array of different types of flying mounts alongside this and overall, this is a good way to get started in your mount collection. Failing that, you can also go over to the Kun Lai Summit, which is in Pandaria. What you're going to be wanting to do here is head over to the vendors for the Grand Expedition Yak, followed alongside that with a couple of other yaks. This will cost quite a bit of gold. The two other yaks will equal in around about 6,000 gold, and the Grand Expedition Yak is going to cost you a significantly a good chunk more. This is if you have enough gold in order to up front, and other than that, this actually works out quite well because this also is a vendor mount as well as is a transmogification mount. So this comes in quite handy, especially if you like to mog your characters and all of that jazz. So that's something you may want to consider if you do a lot of transmogging for yourself. That being said, let's move on to number two, which is the Disc of the Red Flying Cloud. Now this can be obtained if you are exalted with the Law Walkers. Now what you're going to be wanting to do for this one is you're going to need to get exalted with the Law Walkers, of course. Now this is quite easy in order to do. To get exalted, it can take you around about an hour if you're doing it on a casual basis. So if you're not really trying to be as speedy as possible, so an hour of your time is not too bad overall. What you're going to be wanting to do is find scrolls all around Pandaria and all you have to do is click on them and then accept the quest. Once you have done that on every single zone in Pandaria, you will then want to head over towards Law Walker Cho who is located in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Hand in those quests and you'll be able to receive loads of reputation which pretty much once you've done all of them you will be exalted with the Law Walkers and you'll be able to purchase your red, your disc of the red flying cloud for around about 600 gold. So this is a very easy mount in order to do and it's actually not bad overall. I do like the disc flying mounts so this is definitely something that I would recommend doing if you like those specific types of mounts and you can basically do this in about under an hour. Other than that, as a side note for this, you can also download a couple of add-ons which are for Handy Notes and also TomTom Tom, respectively for the Law Walkers. All you have to do is go into the Cursed Client and just type in Law Walker and you'll be able to find them. Or failing that and you just want to be have life a little bit easier, I've left a link to one of them in the description which I find the best for that. Aside from all of that guys, let's just jump into our third one, which is the Culling of Strathholm, which is for the Bronze Drake. Now I remember getting this one back in Wrath, and this has to be on Heroic Mode. You are on a timer in order to get a hold of this, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to clear the dungeon in around about 25 minutes. This is really easy in order to do today, but back then it was a little bit harder in order to do definitely. But this is for a 100% drop mount for the Bronze Drake and you have to just go into the Culling of Strathome, 
do a load of the dialogue and burst through it as fast as you possibly can and get round to the corner before you go in and see Malganus and you'll be able to kill one of those guys and you'll be able to kill one of the infinite dragonflight who drops the mount. So this is really easy in order to do and you can basically get it in the next like 10 minutes if you so wish to get a hold of the bronze drake. Funnily enough this was actually my first ever flying mount as it was 100% drop chance so this worked out quite well for myself. Aside from all of that let's jump into our fourth one which is the Winter Spring Frost Saber and the Venom Hide Ravasaur. You can get a hold of these for 20 days of daily quests in Winter Spring and also Unguro Crater respectively depending on if you're Alliance or your Horde. Now what you're going to be wanting to do is head over to the Quest Givers and they can be found on the edge of the actual zone and what you're going to be wanting to do is just do the initial introduction quest and then do the 20 days of daily quests. Once you've done all 20 days of those daily quests, you will be rewarded with the Winter Spring Frost Saber or the Venom Hide Ravasaur. Now, funnily enough, if you are Alliance or Horde you and you actually complete it and you get the mount, you also get the other mount for your opposite faction as well. So you don't have to do another 20 days to get the other one for Alliance or Horde. Once you've done the 20 days, you get both mounts. So that is something that is quite handy and that is a two for one, really. So. Other than that guys, that is pretty easy in order to do, so let's jump on to our fifth one which is the Karaji Battle Tanks. Now there is a little bit of a snag with the Karaji Battle Tanks and that is they can only be mounted up in this actual raid. Now what the raid in particular is the Temple of On Karaj or AQ40 and what you're going to be wanting to do is just jump in there and just gather up all of the trash and burn them down. Once you've done that, up to the first boss, you'll want to reset the instance and jump back in. This is will be kind of like how you do gold farming and just killing the trash and then resetting as you, once you've killed the boss you'll be locked for the week. So realistically if you accidentally kill the boss then just complete the entire raid by killing everything and then hopefully you'll get all of those mounts. They are on a very easy drop chance especially but the hardest one to get is the red one as this one rewards you with a feat of strength achievement to go along with that so that is something you can do also so you get four mounts for this actual particular farm and you'll be able to pad out your mount collection quite nicely next on our list is the garn night Hell at number six and what you're going to be wanting to do here is go over to Not Karosh. Now I've covered this as a gold farm back in the day and overall this is really easy in order to do. What you're going to need to do is go over to the Frostfire Ridge and head over to the far left hand side of the actual map. Over here is Not Karosh, it's a big wolf and all you have to do is kill it. This has a 20 minute respawn timer so it's really easy to get a hold of this mount and it is a 100% drop chance. What you can either do is you can get a hold of that mount for free and be able to <laughs> by, by killing the mob. So even if it's down, you just have to wait in between 20 minutes to actually get a hold of it again. So this is something you could just do on a casual basis. But also you can also buy this off of the auction house for not a lot of gold as it is tradable and it is sellable on the auction house. So highly recommended if you are wanting to do a little bit of a casual gold farm as well as getting a hold of a pretty decent looking mount overall. It, it's a pretty decent looking mount for something that's so easy to get a hold of. So other than that, that being said, let's just jump into our next one which is the Primal Raptors. Now this can be located on the Isle of Giants and what you're going to be wanting to do here is just by running around in a circular-esque fashion and just killing out all of the dinosaurs. You can be rewarded with a unique item called the Primal Egg and after three days it will hatch and either provide you with three of the four raptors. So basically you have a chance of getting one of the three raptors which is pretty damn good. I find that this farm is quite well and overall if you do want to make some gold while you're doing this you can also bring a skinner along because you can sell the giant dinosaur bones which you just get anyway and also the exotic leather you can sell on the auction house as well so you can make some gold while getting hold of some mounts so that's really handy. 
Alongside this, if once you've actually got 9,999 giant dinosaur bones, you can go to the left-hand side cave on the map and trade that in for the white bone primal raptor, which also rewards you with a feat of strength achievement. As well as that, you also get a white mount that looks pretty damn cool. That being said, let's jump onto our next one, which is the male muncher. Now, the male muncher is a really cool mount. It's rather easy to get a hold of. Uh, alas, I have not actually got this mount because I despise horrific visions. I just can't be bothered. As much as I would like the mount, I just can't bring myself to do horrific visions. They're just so boring. But aside from all of that, what you're going to be wanting to do is go into a horrific vision. And obviously we're now with 60, it's really easy to just blast through it. And pretty much what you're going to be wanting to do is just look out for mailboxes. Um, you can also download a couple of add-ons that tell you where all the mailboxes are, which are for handy notes. But aside from that, the mail muncher is basically something that can drop from those mailboxes. So when you go into horrific vision, all you have to do is just open up a mailbox and just if you see it and then hopefully you get a hold of the mount from there. So that's a really easy mount in order to get a hold of, especially if you like doing horrific visions. So that being said, let's move on to our, sec our second to last one, which is the Amani Battle Bear. The Amani Battle Bear is a 100% drop chance mount and that comes from Zulaman within the Ghostlands. What you're going to be wanting to do here is just by jumping into the actual instance, do a little bit of RP at the beginning, especially with Vol'jin, but aside from all of that, all you have to do is you're on a timer to take out all four of the bosses. What you're going to be wanting to do is take out all four of the initial bosses, and once you actually get to the Bear God, make sure he is your last one you actually kill. Um, once you've actually taken him out, all you have to do and just click on the NPC within the cage within there and she will smash a load of pots. On the floor will spawn a couple of things that you can loot so you get a little bit of gold. Uh, but aside from that, you, a bag will actually spawn once she breaks those pots and you'll be rewarded with the Amani Battle Bear, which is a very easy mount in order to get a hold of and overall, Azula Man doesn't take you that long in order to do anymore, but back in the day it took you quite a while to try and get that done in time. That being said, let's move on to our last and final one, which is the Cloud Serpent Mounts, which will require you to get exalted with the Cloud Serpents, with the Order of the Cloud Serpents. Now, a while back I did a reputation video on this, so let's just clarify this right now. All you have to do really is just do the introductionary quest in order to get a hold of the initial rep with the Order of the Cloud Serpents. And if you wanted to brute force this, like get exalted as fast as possible, all you have to do is fly around the islands which are located off of the sea from the Order of the Cloud Serpents within the Jade Forest and just fly up and around the actual mountain area to actually look for those onyx eggs which then you can turn into the NPC where the Order of the Cloud Serpent reps are and you can turn those in for 500 reputation apiece. This doesn't take very long in order to do, it literally took me a couple of hours in order to get exalted and that's just by brute forcing it by collecting the onyx eggs and overall you also get a hold of if you are a jewel crafter the panther mount recipes as well just as an fyi so you can also craft mounts as well to get a hold of those if you don't already have them so that actually works out quite well in the long run aside from all of that once you've actually got an exalted you can purchase some cloud serpent mounts from the vendor but also, but also you can do your daily quest to go along with that to, in order to get a couple more mounts of the Order of the Cloud Serpent as well. So that works out really well for a massive blast of Cloud Serpent mounts to go along with that. And that, that is 10 easy mounts that you can get a hold of pretty dang fast and you can probably brute force this in about a day. Other than that guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be soon. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better, then why not check out the Patreon? Members get additional info, gold making resources and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.